Yeah, sure. So uh, this is the sponsor spotlight. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go take you through exactly how we bake in GitOps and all the stuff you've heard so far and all the kind of GitOps principles, how we bake that into some of our products and um, to give you an idea of the capability when you kind of start pushing GitOps as far as it'll go. So let me start sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see uh, that I've, I've got a, a user interface here, but uh, let, let's start about what we're going to be talking about. So right now we have three, uh, three machines uh, hosted on, on AWS right now, uh, and they're basically forming a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster for us. And so on top of that, we really have a, a, a tool that not only just installs Kubernetes, but provides a, a smart interface, a GitOps interface essentially, into a Kubernetes cluster, and especially how to manage workload and applications on that cluster. So this is what we're seeing here. We're seeing a Weave Kubernetes platform, um, the user interface once it's all installed and, and running. Now, the first thing that you can notice, we have a, a, a brief overview, and we have a set of components. We have 13 components installed into uh, our, uh, our cluster. And some of those are kind of standard stuff. So for example, if we uh, open the Grafana component, we, we have a monitoring uh, set up already, and we can take a look at, say, uh, some resource usage, and we'll get the dashboards out of the box uh, baked into the product itself. Because really, uh, observability and monitoring is, is part of the core of GitOps. It's so important uh, when we to make decisions, for the agents to make decisions, that uh, you have those metrics uh, that the agents can use to make those decisions. So we, we bake that into uh, the product when we, when we put it together. Uh, and uh, so another tool that we've already seen actually is Weave Scope, and I've got it open here. And this is also another observability tool that lets us inspect what's in our cluster. And it goes all the way from the hosts, this is the machine level, all the way down to individual processes. And uh, this is uh, quite, quite a lot of processes are running on this cluster right now. Uh, but the idea here is that you can see um, everything that's happening on your cluster uh, live, and all the network connection, all the, all the actual lines here, are derived live from the network traffic uh, that's actually happening on your machines. And you can see it dynamically changing as uh, microservices connect and reconnect. Uh, so this is a really useful observability tool. So all that's baked in, but this isn't really GitOps. So what, what are we talking about in GitOps? Well, everything about our cluster is declared, right? It's the first principle of GitOps. Uh, everything is declared, everything is defined declaratively. And so we have this uh, master branch, this repository, and we can go and open this repository, uh, which defines our entire cluster. This is a, a default cluster uh, that has a, a bunch of uh, definitions in. And if we wanted to modify our core cluster, our kind of the entire cluster, then we could add a new, uh, a new configuration file here in this, in this uh, repository. But usually what you actually end up having is you have multiple tenants on a cluster. And, and tenants might be the same team, but might be different applications. Uh, or they might be different teams running on the same cluster. And this is where we have workspaces. So workspaces, the idea is that we have segregated, uh, namespace segregated environments for each of your teams, for them to be able to have complete control over that environment. So we already have three teams, but uh, we could easily create a new one if we wanted. But I'm just going to use one of the existing teams. So for example, let's take a look at Team Zulu workspace. And uh, let me just jump into that repository for Team Zulu workspace. So this is uh, their, the control layer for that team. That team now has complete control over their application in that namespace. So let's go find that namespace in Weave Scope. So if we have a look at, say, the controllers, and we can filter by namespace. And I'm looking at the Team Zulu namespace. So I'll try and find the Team Zulu, uh, Team Zulu namespace here. So right now we have a uh, Flux running. We have a few things up and running. And we have a container deployment of pod info. So really, the, the core of GitOps is now we don't ever want to touch, as, as Alexis mentioned, right? This is a black box. We, only want to, we don't really want to be poking a live production system because that has a lot of risk. So what we will do instead is, We'll go into our Zulu organization uh, definition. We can take a look at a, one of the configuration file here. So this is all declared, right? We're declaring what's happening on the machine. And so when we change that declaration, we should see a change in the running system. So let me make a change right now. I'm going to make a, a really simple change. I'm going to change the replica count from four to, so let's say, seven. 
So I'm expecting three more machines. Now remember, uh, when I, I actually take a look at it here, we only have four pod info deployment and I can uh, filter for these guys uh, as well. So I can see that I've got four pod info deployment. Now when I make that change, when I commit that change uh, to master, what I'm expecting to happen is I'm now gonna have seven deployments. So I'll just press commit. <laughs> This uh, usually what you do, and this is just for the demo so we can move quickly, but usually what you do is this, this file will then be validated. It would be checked. You'd create a pull request against your repository. Uh, that would be automatically validated and you might have uh, enforce a process whereby uh, another human, another engineer or another operator uh, would actually verify that the commit um, is correct before you push it to master. But uh, I, I, hopefully I know what I'm doing and I, I can push straight to master for this, uh, for this little demo. So now I could go to weave, uh, weave scope and we can see straight away that uh, we've upgraded our deployment, right? There are now seven replicas exactly as expected. So this is a kind of uh, really when we talked about closing the feedback loop and I think both Alexis and Paul already talked about this today. But the idea here is that we're, we're making the speed of operations super fast, right? You've literally, I, I had the time to talk about it. And by the time I got back into my user interface, the, the containers were there, right? They were scheduled immediately. So that, that's very fast feedback loop between making a decision, enacting it, and having the system react to my decision is core to achieving the kind of the, the higher level aim of improving velocity for your teams, improving velocity for your organization. And this is really what we're trying to enable here. And naturally, because we've, uh, we're in a multi-tenant environment here, we have multiple teams, we have other teams here. So we were talking about the Zulu team, but we can certainly take a look at the Alpha team as well. And we'll notice that the Alpha team have their own deployment, right? So we can take a look at the Alpha team namespace. So if we just jump back into the name scope, change, let me remove my filter, change to the Alpha team namespace. So this should be Team Alpha. And we can see that Team Alpha has, has a different set of applications. They've got a completely different set of applications. So now we have segregated namespace, each individually controlled through GitOps so that the team's velocity uh, can be increased. And this is for the team, this is for the application developer, but uh, there's also us as our also platform operator, which is a really common use case. A lot of the time in your organization, you'll have a, a team dedicated to the platform uh, and this, this uh, workflow isn't just for uh, the, the application teams, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is also for our operations team, right? Our operations team can define cluster-wide provisioning uh, through this control repository as well. So we're able to create a GitOps loop for our operations for the platform, but also for the operations for the application teams. Uh, so, this is a, a, an overview of kind of the Weave Kubernetes platform, where we've tried to bake in uh, as much um, as much of the GitOps methodology and the GitOps principles as we can to make the experience um, reflect all the principles and, and improve the velocity of your team, really speed you up. Now, a lot of this is, is built upon our open source contributions. Uh, we, we're trying really hard to involve the community. One of the things we do to um, really kind of open this up is to have a component-based model uh, so that we can add in new components in the future. We can add in custom components for our uh, customers as well. But having this component interface, this kind of component mechanism, lets us compose the experience and tailor it to our, our, our users really, uh, so that your cluster might look slightly different. If for example, you use a different visualization tool to Grafana, or you want to use uh, another stack for uh, deployment uh, and management. So that's it. That's a very short demo of the Weave Kubernetes platform. I hope you found it useful. And I hope you can see how we've tried to bake in the GitOps principle into what we do as well here at Weaveworks. And I'll, I'll pass it back on to our, awesome MCs by uh, stopping to share my screen. Thanks so much, Bruce. It's a beautiful demo.